Hey guys, check it out. This is our 110. Thought I'd give you a quick walk around, show you what, how we roll here. This is our daily driver, by the way, but we also use to go camping. So what we're doing at these next few videos is trying to convert this expedition truck, which has really been places like Mongolia, to try and work it so we can use it our way. And also as a daily driver, which we use for work. So having said that, I'll give you a quick tour of what we have in front of us. Starting with the front, I'll show you the bull bar. This one came with a truck. It's galvanized, but I thought I'd paint it black, put some hammerite on it. I think it suits the car a bit better. We have a winch here, three or four ton winch, I'm not sure. There are no name plates left to see. It's hardly been used, but it's handy for towing other people out, not when you get stuck. This is our little mascot, leading the way from the front. It gets there first, keeps us out of trouble. On the bonnet, you got a spare wheel, as you do, bonnet latches. I'm not sure why they're there because normally the weight of the spare wheel will keep the bonnet closed, right? You're not going that fast. This is a BFG Mud 235, so it's quite tall. But having said that, it's not really a hindrance, you know? We put our TomTom um, our -tom in there and the TomTom -tom is actually lower from your sight line than the front of the tire, but it works. Happy with the old 200 TDIs, ventilation left and right, split climate control, very handy. There used to be some thick tubing along the edge for security. And on the front, there used to be a little flap down step to get onto the bonnet. Uh, we removed that and put these tree sliders in here. These are much better. I mean, check this out. You can come anywhere you like on the car, walk around, reach for stuff, check the tent, whatever you need to do and you can get onto the car which means you can use the spare wheel to stand on and to sit on you can even jump on it I'm crazy right moving on to the rest of the car wheels and tires everything is standard in here standard diffs there's no lockers nothing these are nan kang 4x4 ats now that sounds pretty impressive and they're not bad off-road, I must say. Rock crawling are pretty good. But in the wet, it's a nightmare. If it rains, you turn the wheel, you keep going forward. You know, you need, really need to mind what you're doing. Mounted on standard eight-spoke steel wheels. They were on the car, we just left it on there. I think when these wear out finally, which they're doing pretty well, we've done about 30,000 kilometers and they haven't really worn much on the road, that is. But then we'll probably put some BFGs on there. We'll see maybe ATs or something like that. On this side we have window channels. Not quite standard, is it? What they've done is they've mounted real glass, but only half the length. So you can open your window. This half of the, uh, the glass is installed and it's a, like a wind barrier. It's like the old w series windows that used to slide back and forth. Here we have an extra fuel tank, it's about 50 litres, um, we've never used it. In fact the key's broken off in the lock, so that might explain something. These windows aren't standard either, this used to be a commercial panel van. They're a bit smaller than you, you might recognise of a normal uh, uh, Defender side window. They're pretty good, they've got everything in there, they've got mesh, they've got blinding on the inside, they've got this channel on the outside as well, which I'm not sure what that's for, maybe some mosquito netting. We'll figure that out. We bought the car off a donkey farmer just north of Nice, so in some canyon somewhere, way out in the sticks. And he explained most of what he knew. He was a second owner, he only owned it for two years. But the original guy had it kitted out the way he wanted because he went to Mongolia, Mauritania, Africa. He's been all over the place. There's a little booklet which we read when we got the car, and this car's been more places than we have, so really nice about that. Here is the, where the compressor lives. I'll try and open it quickly. It's just a compressor uh, fan really. You need to open this when you run it because this cable gets caught up in here, which you don't really want. But yeah, that's really handy. It's nice to have it in there. It's out of the way. If you have to uh, air down your tires, check your tire pressures, try and blow some dust out of the car, which is not going to happen on a Defender, right? So around the back, there's a lot of little things on the car which we have no idea what they're for. 
like here some channels along the back which is obviously for some kind of uh, yeah an awning or something I'm not sure what that is we got the spare wheel carrier the more eagle eyed of you will notice that it's not in the center where it normally lives it's off to one side and I suspect it's got a double hinge here I suspect it's for this window because we got a little window here oh let's see there we go which you can open up it's a mirroring there's a little roller blind here which can close up there's space for mosquito netting as well so I imagine that was this car spent a lot of time in the desert and that's the reason for that otherwise it wouldn't be able to open I think I stand to be corrected the thing about buying a second-hand car second-hand third-hand an old defender let's say you never know what the reasoning was behind it and you keep discovering new things all the time this as we know is a handy towel rack that's all it is used for really I don't know why it's there otherwise he's installed a little cupboard here this used to be where he used to hang his clothing I think we use it for tie wraps oil compressor lines all that kind of stuff you need so yeah inside is a bit of a mess but we'll talk about that later it has a bigger uh, diesel tank in the back it's now 105 liters which is good he's had this huge plate installed here as well it's got an extra wiring attachment for electrics for your trailer if you have your uh, fridge in the trailer you can have that powered while you're driving as well here we have a high quality uh, step ladder to get up to the roof cost about 15 euros I think I'm sure you understand where this came from but it's a lot of steel for your money so be happy with that over here is our water this is where the shower plugs into there's a whole lot of plumbing under here it'll tap to empty the water tank so you plug your shower in here and you can hook it on here shower it's quite nice the water tank is here it's not heated it's just cold water but that's fine you know if you're in the in the sun as we are it's about 50 liters I believe over here we have our snorkel uh, this one I'll put on myself it's also a cheapie really but it's nice to have the mushroom on top which is cool the original one was uh, mounted over here and it seemed to be a DIY job with some plumbing pipe and I wasn't really sure if it was legit or not so I changed it up you know you got to do something yourself on these cars so the only thing that wasn't on the car was the roof rack and I thought I'd invest in something really special I'm sure you know who this, <laughs> this comes from it costs like 200 pounds or something I don't know and you can see that what I did is converted it because normally they come with the higher this is about here and it rolls straight through so I thought it didn't look very classy so first I painted it black cut that down put this over here so at least we can get our roof tent on the roof it's not a high quality item as we all know in fact the rear cross member here has sagged even though I've attached a spare piece to it to make it double as thick and on this side the weld is even broken off completely so I've bodged something here from what I had lying around in the garage so yeah you know you get what you pay for and look at least you can carry stuff around which is the important thing and here on the roof is what I was told was a satellite receiver and there is a cable in here somewhere which where you can plug into your laptop I've tried that nothing happens so who knows the rest of the interior is fairly standard all that's been changed here is that they put the radio up there above the rear view mirror and the rest of it is fairly standard there's just a switch for the winch on the inside and a switch to pump the diesel from this tank to that tank but yeah that we don't really use that so our defendant's called Dakota I'm sure you can understand why 
This isn't standard. I know defenders come with pop rivets, but this is crazy. So for that reason, in reference to the old DC-3 Dakota aeroplanes, which are just one big pop rivet, this is the same thing. And this just goes, it just gets us there, makes noises, it clunks. There's some strange things on the front axle, which we'll get to later. But for the rest, uh, it runs and we're happy with that. So if something does go wrong, okay, it's my fault because I knew it was coming. Because I know the CVs are worn out, the drive shafts are worn out, the swivels need replacing. We've got a death wobble going on. The steering is like in an American movie. I'm going to be tackling the front end with my Haynes manual and a lot of advice from you guys on the net. So yeah, whatever you can tell me, I'll be happy. So yeah, welcome to Dakota. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give us a thumbs up and we'll catch you next time. We're rolling. Okay, we're rolling. Okay. For now, we need a earphone, right?